from the foundation of the world. And everything that happens is for His glory. And these are trials that we go through, but they're to be, they're to be uh, embraced. Jesus embraced the cross. He didn't shun it. He embraced the suffering. And thank, thank the Lord, He did embrace the suffering. Some people think that when they're saved, that they're going to just have a life free of problems. And uh, maybe that's what some people come for. They think life is just going to be like a bowl of ice cream <laughs> and we're going to have no more problems. But that's not the whole purpose for why we live. We live to, to do God's will. We live to perform the will that he had for us from the day that, that we were uh, conceived. And uh, it's our job to align ourselves up with His will. Yes. His will and His way. Yes. Um, so, He miraculously provides for our provision, for where we live, eat, yes. clothes. Don't, don't worry about what you eat or your clothes that you wear. Because He cares for the lilies of the field. He cares for the sparrow that falls. He cares for every little thing. And so surely he's going to care for his children. And he does he does take care of his children over the ones who reject him. Amen. He does. He um, protects us in ways that sometimes we'll never know until we get to glory. How many times he saved us from that accident? How many times he saved us from knowing that person who could have done great harm? Um, we just we just can't put him in a box and say this is what God is um, in my mind because his mind is infinite it's in, unfathomable it's it's not to be um, it's not easily to be grasped but Jesus left <coughs> the throne of glory and gave up his his um, divinity to to be like a man and to suffer the things that we do in the flesh. And so now he understands what we're going through. So we do have a high priest who, who understands our mortal estate. And we do feel sometimes like we're not the perfect sons of God or are walking in victory. But this, this tent does preach victory in Jesus and how do we have victory in Jesus? How do we have victory in Jesus? <laughs> we, we, we just we, we read the Bible. We do, we do what it says. We follow God, God's will. We follow God's orders, His commands to love all, to love those who, who don't even love us, to love our enemies, and to just do as Jesus commanded. And then we will walk in the straight path. We'll walk in the straight path. And we will reach our goal. We'll run the race that's put before us. And when we're finished, he will say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else have something good to say tonight before we move forward? I'm going to plug in this other mic here. You know, I just felt led to start tonight because people show up and want to talk and they say they can't stay for the meeting, but they'll stay for 30 minutes to talk to you. That's all I'm going to say about that. If I would have stood there and talked to them for 30 more minutes, they would have stayed. But since I wanted to have service, they don't have time for that. Why don't you just go ahead and spit in the Lord's face? That's what they're doing. I don't care what you're on your way to do. When you see this tent and you are drawn, there is a reason. And it might not be the reason that is in your mind. It might be a different reason. And I'm not, I'm not just saying might. it is a different reason. It is a God reason. Praise the Lord. And I'm just rebuking that spirit. Because it follows me everywhere we go. Praise the Lord. And it might have seemed like I was mad. 
and I am mad at the enemy. But the enemy is not some creepy crawly guy out there with the red cape and, and horns. Praise the Lord. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of confusion. Spirit of pride. Spirit of the love of this world. You know, and then somebody has an idea of where the tent would do better. Well, it would do better if you would just stay. Amen. Dogs can obey better than people. Praise the Lord. I can see why. You know, all dogs go to heaven. Now, don't get mad at me tonight out there in the internet, man. I'm not preaching that. I'm just trying to bring a smile back to somebody's face. I didn't plug in this other microphone. So just in case you were wondering tonight, why the sudden, abrupt beginning... <laughs> I was trying to get those people to hear at least two seconds before they left in their car. Amen? Because there is something, I mean, we preached it last night. Wasn't that a strong word of God last night? About just reverencing the holiness of coming together as God's building. We are His building. Amen? We're His house. Praise the Lord. We're His dwelling place. And when we come together, there's something powerful. There's something healing. Amen? There is that great power of God that dwells amongst his building, in his building, which is his people. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. Thank you, Jesus. Audrey, did you want to say anything? Did you want to testify? Praise the Lord. Where did you put that on the mic, Brother Dennis? to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, the tent. I love it better in any place that we could possibly be. I believe God honors the tent. You know, the high priests in the olden days used to go under the tent. They didn't build a wreck these big... In fact, if I remember correctly, the Messiah, uh, at his crucifixion, and after he died, told them that temple was going to come down, didn't he? The one that was made of stone and mortar or whatever they built it with, it came down, didn't it? Yeah. And, you know, a, a lot of ministers are, are preaching now that we're not under the law, and, and this is true that we're not under the law, but he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, didn't he? And if we love him, that's what we're going to do. You know, I hear a lot of ministers teach about the mercy and the grace period, and we're under this, and we're under that, but... You know what? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And to me, that's very important. Every one of those commandments, those commandments were written by the finger of the of Jehovah Almighty into that stone. Okay? It wasn't created by man, and it wasn't created by the disciples. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what we're supposed to live by. And if we fall... Uh, and we get up and, and we ask for forgiveness, he's merciful. But that doesn't mean we can just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. Because I know a lot of people don't believe it, but the Word tells us clearly that people can be given up to a reprobate mind. And that there is a place, a, a place that they can go of no return. And you won't hear that preach. You won't hear people preach about it, okay? Oh, the minister's here. But I love the Lord, and I want to please Him, and I want to hear when that day comes, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Everything I do means something to me. I check my actions. I check my motives. That's another thing. You know, it's it, it, what a lot of people, a lot of people slide on is, and, and, and don't check themselves on is what is the motive behind what they do. What is their ulterior motive? And David said, Create them within me a clean heart, O God. And that's been my prayer. And, and if, if the thought goes off and it, where it shouldn't go, I have to snap it right there and say, Uh-uh. That's not the mind of Christ, is it? 
I get aggravated with these people out here because I've ministered to these people. I've prayed for these people. I've spent time with these people out here. And the least they can do is get under this tent instead of giving me excuses. I spent, I, I travailed out here. I walked this territory and claimed it and named it. And <laughs> you know, I, was, I, I, I kept that scripture where, wherever I planted, put my feet, whatever, wherever ground I put my feet on, I claimed it. And I put my feet all over this United States. You know? But, um, so glad to have y'all tonight. I'm so glad y'all made it. And praise God, it's going to be an awesome night, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Let's put it on the pulpit this one. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I haven't forgot about you, Brother Dennis. I'm just going to sing another song first.
But I love I love these tent revivals. Amen. I grew up in them. Amen. I remember as a boy sleeping under the chairs. My dad had a tent. Amen. And uh, traveling across the country with that at times, but not as much as I would have liked to have. Amen. And then we grew up and we began to get our own tents. Praise the Lord. But I love God. Would you stand with me tonight? Let's pray. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you're faithful. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that your word, it is forever settled. It always accomplishes every purpose it's sent to God. And every heart, and every life, every year that will hear God, that word, God. That it will come alive, God, in them. That it will find a place of lodging. That something will begin to be built inside of them. That they would begin to become who you have called them to be. Not a defeated people, but a people of power and a people of victory. The people that have been set apart from the world. The people that have come out from that that has no power. And I love you tonight, God. And I'm going to give you praise. And I'm going to give you glory for who you are. Thank you, God, that our words will not fall to the ground. But your ear will hear, God. That your hand is not short. That it cannot reach forth. And it will not save, God. But tonight again, save and heal and deliver and do miracles in this place. Change somebody's life. Don't let us leave the same, but let us leave changed by the power of your word. Yes. If your anointing would fall again, God, on every part of this service, God, that you and you alone would be glorified, that no one would receive glory, but you would receive all the glory. And I give you praise tonight. Hallelujah. I love you, God. 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 I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Let the world know, I love you, God. I love you, God. I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to sing this song, if you know it. Help me sing it, all right? That King Jesus is all that really matters. Hallelujah. And my life will never be. I'll never be the same Now it is only One way I can touch Him Hallelujah I must believe When I call on That name Touching Him Jesus That's all That really matters
God has to give God a great big praise. Now let me just want to stand up. Amen. And let us reverence the Spirit of God as we welcome God's woman of faith and power. Amen. Just a shade of chorus. Come on, give the Lord a great big hand clap. And she tells the minister the word of God. You better shout. You're going to be shouting. You're going to be shouting, believe me.
know the reason why I love that song, because he really is our all in all. And I couldn't come up here and speak or do one thing without him. So that song means a lot to me, because every time I hear it, I say, Lord, without you, we truly are nothing, like she is saying. But I said, with God, with God, with God, we have all things. So we might be nothing without him, but we are all things with him. For he said, all things are possible to them that believe and are called according to his great purpose. And there's nothing that we can't do, nothing we can't achieve, no mountain too high. Right then, 